Yo, yo, welcome back. Today we are doing a recap of the EMI shield that I had installed on this Porter pack right here. Uh, this is the Clifford Heath version right there. And I did a video on this a few weeks ago of just me soldering it in place. And I actually put that one in. This is the BRK Mini. This has a Clifford Heath 2025 board in it with the EMI shield. This is kind of a standalone SDR, so it can run on uh, an Android or a computer of some sort. So that's what that guy's mainly for. And then I also installed one on this H4M right here. This also has the Clifford Heath 2025 board in it as well. The video was just me installing it and not really showing its capabilities and if it was gonna work or not. It was more just how to install it. Today we're gonna be looking at uh, its receiving capabilities. I have this H4M right here is a stock H4M. This one right here is also a stock H4M. I will be using one to transmit a signal and then the other two to receive. Now, if you're looking obviously at the screen, you can already see that one of these is receiving a lot better than the other one. And they are set to the exact same frequency and they have the same settings with the LNA and VGA. That kind of tells you already that something is definitely working. I am also using uh, all same antennas. So these are the Diamond SRH805Ss. Uh, they are good for the 144, 430, and then 1200 megahertz ranges. So it's a wide, wide band antenna there. I got these on AliExpress and like a four pack or something like that. But I did want to kind of keep this as close as I could to apples to apples and not apples to oranges. With that being said, let's just dive into this. Uh, I will be transmitting a signal wave. Like I said, I'm on FM modulation. I, my wave is going to be a, an assi a sine wave. Uh, the tone is going to be 1000 hertz. And I have it going for about 60 seconds. I probably won't go that long. And then I have my frequency at 145.680. These are set to receive on that same frequency as well. And uh, my gain is 35 here. All my amps are off. And then again, both of these right here, you can see here. Uh, 40 and then 40 right here and then 46 and then 46 right here is what we are going to be receiving at. The volume on this guy is a little bit louder. Uh, you probably can't hear that, but if I go higher, you can see that we are receiving some kind of tone. Um, but let's just go ahead and start. You can definitely see that this guy right here, the blue compared to the green is a lot more clean on the Clifford Heath one with the EMI shield. And now if we drop this down, let's go to our LNA and we're going to kind of drop this down to 16 and then we're going to go to the other one that does not have the EMI shield in there and 16 as well. So I'm going to drop this volume down over here on the Clifford Heath one. You can hear you get the tone for sure, but there is static coming through. So it does have some interference of some sort bleeding through, disrupting that signal right there. If I then turn this volume down over here, and then we're going to turn this other guy with the EMI shield over here up. You can hear that that signal is a lot cleaner, meaning that the EMI shield definitely is working. So let's go ahead and stop this. I am then going to change my wave. Let's go to saw wave. And we're gonna change the tone a little bit. Let's go to 3000, no, let's go to 2000 Hertz, start. And if I turn this guy up, and I'm gonna go ahead and drop the bottom of this guy. You probably can hear that. And again, we have a lot more static. We are getting that signal, but it is very, very distorted. So let's go ahead and stop that because that's kind of high pitch there for my little ears. I'll go back to 1000 and let's go ahead and turn this up to a pseudo noise here. And let's go ahead and drop down on this guy. We're going to drop down the VGA. Let's go down all the way down to 26 and then we're going to do the same thing over here. So we got 1616, uh, 2626, our amp is still zero. We are on narrow FM. And let's just go ahead and hit start down here. So there's that pseudo noise coming through. It is a little bit broken up. Now it's going to drop that volume down. And then this guy, we're going to go all the way up. And it's a lot cleaner signal. I'm going to say at that EMI shield and the this one right here, the Clifford Heath one that I have, 
definitely added some value to the overall reception of the Portapak H4M. This could also be done with the H2 as well. Overall, we can definitely see here that the one with the EMI shield on the Clifford Heath one is definitely uh, adding some sort of value to that. Let's try a, let's try a square wave. Now, overall, that signal looks very, very identical between all three or uh, between the two of them. I'm not seeing a lot of reds and such that we saw earlier or greens. And again, you can hear that static coming through here. So that's that. Now let's go to this guy. And you can hear how clean that signal coming through is. All right, so I hope that kind of answers the question more or less of does the new Alec EMI shield really add some shielding and some difference into your port pack H4M? And I would definitely say yes, it does. Go check it out. I'll put a link in the description below for that. And today's sponsor is PCBWay. So thank you, PCBWay, for sponsoring this channel for quite some time now. If you guys do not know who PCBWay is, they do PCB designs. Uh, so they can take uh, drawings, they can take your schematics, your BOMs, and that kind of stuff, and then turn it into an actual tangible, holdable PCB that you can get back in return. I'll put a link in the description below for, to save some dollars off your first order from PCBWay. Uh, they can also do uh, 3D printing. They can do CNC milling. They do sheet metal as well. And they also do have a shared project location. Uh, I believe this is the eighth year that they are now doing their shared projects uh, contest. So definitely go check out the shared projects portion of PCBWay. Uh, if you're looking for some kind of inspiration for a project or you just may not really know what you want to create yourself, but you can always go through there and find projects that are that have been submitted. And then you can have PCBWay print those projects for you. Uh, we did that about uh, 10 months ago now with the KV4PHT, and then we also did that with the Logic Analyzer. Thank you, PCBWay, for sponsoring the channel and for all your support. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. You guys are awesome. If you guys have any questions regarding the EMI uh, from Nuelec, shoot me a comment down below or join my Discord. I'll put links for that as well. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your time as always, and do not forget to like, subscribe, to that fun stuff, and I will see you guys in the next video.